That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. Yes, sir. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Lockout men back again with another podcast for you guys today. Podcast interview. Welcome to the Lockout Men Podcast Show. The show where the train is still rolling. What's going on? Train is simulcast live with the LOM community tonight. What's going on, y'all? Y'all come up in the building. Make sure y'all hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? The lights is free. It is free. That's what I'm saying. Y'all get to see the behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Well, what can I what, what can I say about uh what can I say about what's going on today? I am back again with another interview for you guys today. So if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? You'll know when I'm coming on. And if you want to support me and the show, yo, you can do that. Hit me up with the cash app. That's dollar sign lockout men. And I am here. You know what I'm saying? So I am coming at you guys with another interview today. I'm just gonna jump right in with her. Because you know, we've been trying to, we, we've been trying back and forth, back and forth. You know, we've been busy and all like that, but now we finally got a chance to get it, get it in with Kim Possible playing in the background. I thought I turned that down. Anyway, anyway, I would like, hold on right quick. There we go. I would like to bring to the show, Miss Stacy Lynn. <laughs> What's going on there, driver? What is good with you? Man, nothing much, nothing much. Just hanging out in this hotel. My you... truck is freight lining, so I'm just cooling. <laughs> okay, man. Okay, so I okay, so today uh my issue is not as as not as much as yours. My issue is with this bougie ass phone that I got. You know what I'm saying? I went I went to T-Mobile, got this Galaxy Note S or Note 20, you know, thinking that this is where you messed up. Oh, you say this is where I messed up because I got the Note 20. That's what you Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 don't no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. You you don't 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 sit there and tell me you Apple. Apple, your messages show up green. <laughs> nah man, nah man, nah man. I can't fuck with Apple. I mean, I I, I mess with Apple. I, I mess. Don't get me wrong. I mess with Apple back in the day. I still got my I, I still got my um iPhone six. I still got that. I know you lie. No, I. I, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Hold on, right quick. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me. Let me show. Let me show. The let me show the community. Let me. Let me. Let me show the community now. See, right here. I got it. I got it. I still got it. With that's the. With that's the. A nah. Nah. I. I still got it. Hold on, right quick. I, I only use it for the I only use it for the music. I only I know you do. You are not connected to the internet. Uh yeah, I hear it. I know I'm not connected to the internet, damn it. Uh hold on right quick. Hold on. Yeah, it's it's right here. The only problem is is that the battery is fucked up. I'm just saying, but I still got it. I still fuss with it. I still rocks with it. You know what I'm saying? 
I still rocks with it. But uh I'm 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 team I'm 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 team Android all the way. I I been team Android when I was when I had the Apple. When I had Apple, I I still had an Android phone. I still had an Android phone because like I said, I only use I only use this thing for the music. That's it. The i because they don't make iPod uh they don't make iPods no more. They they Apple don't make uh, it, if they do, let me know where is it at because I'll fuck I'll, I'll fuck around and get a uh, iPod because the the phone I like an eBay. Oh, you say you say head over to eBay. Yeah, that's that's about the only place you're gonna find one of them. I I know, right? I talk, I'm telling you, I don't. I, I'm I'm telling you, just just don't fuck with them. But I got this phone thinking that you know that. I, I, I upgraded from the S10. I walked in the store. I was like, yo, I want the I want the Note 20, bro. He was like, he was like, um, we got the Note 20. We got the Note 20. I was like, fuck yeah, give me that Note 20 right quick, bro. And he goes, uh, you want the Note 20 Ultra? I was like, fuck yeah. He came over there, he started to ring that motherfucker up, and that bitch came up to like $1,300. Third, uh, uh, about four, about fourteen hundred dollars at the tax. I was like, whoa, 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 wait, bruh, wait. He was like, how much you would like to put down on it? Money. Huh? You got big money? Nah, man. Just because I'm a truck driver doesn't mean that I'm making big money like that. Nah, he was like, he asked I me. He was, it. he was like, he was like, how much you want to put down on it? I was like, well, shit. I, I guess I'm gonna have to put something down on it if you charging me close to fourteen fucking hundred dollars. But I was like, nah, bruh. I was like, nah, bruh. I, I said, where's the other one that was, that was, uh, that was cheaper? That's uh, eight. Uh, it was like eight hundred dollars or some shit like that. And he goes, oh, you you want the S? You want the Note twenty? I said, yeah. Ain't that the one I fucking asked for? Oh, okay. Well, this is the ultra. I don't want no ultra. What the? I, you know what? I showed him this phone right here, and I said, I ain't even cracked this phone open all the way. Like, I ain't even use all the bells and whistles that's on the S10 Plus, and I had this for almost a year and a half. So what I'm looking like spending fourteen hundred dollars on a phone that I'm not even going to take advantage of all like that. So, I I get this one. I can't even pay for my phone. Add it to the phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> so I get this. I paid off now. <laughs> I get this one right here, and uh, I'm rolling. What's good, Teflon Don? Uh, I'm rolling. We're heading, you know, heading into uh, Illinois listening to uh you know listen to youtube music and youtube and all of a sudden the the stream was like cracking and i'm like wait i i never had no problem coming down this way you know coming through the turnpike without without good signal you know I always have good signal on the turnpike so i turned around to call t-mobile up and i was going like yo uh what's up with the what's up with the What's up with the signal? Oh, well, we still rolling 5G in. And I'm like, okay. So you must be in the area that's that don't have good 5G coverage. Okay? Huh. So I had to re he told me now, I had to I'm that now. Huh? My 5G ain't worth the um, my 5G ain't worth the nothing. <laughs> I know I had to revert back to 4G. I had to revert back to 4G and I'm like man, come on. Come on. Chicago BBW what's going on? I'm I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But uh I'm talking to you and watching you Ah, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, Stacy Lynn, let everybody know. Uh, let everybody know who you are and where you come from. 
Well, hello, hello, hello. My name is Stacey Lynn Richardson. I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Tussa, 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 Luke. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, at Stacy, Stacy, hold up, hold up. I'm, I'm trying to pronounce Tussa, Lusa, Tussa, Luska, Tussa, 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 Tuska, 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 Hell yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, wait, quick. I got to get myself a. But there we go. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Tus he found baby Tuscaloosa. That tus what? Whatever. All right, go ahead. Continue. What, what you were saying now? Nah, nothing major. Just I'm new to the trucking, you know, community. Uh, I've only been driving for about forty-five days, roughly, and that's. Um, with my company prior to that i had only been in school for three weeks so all of this is new uh i'm just out here learning my ropes all and right my so first you, week was awesome oh man 40 45 days for real for real i thought you drove i thought you drove yeah. a little bit longer than that New, new booty to the road <laughs> oh man so what you what you was doing before you got into trucking I was working for Mercedes Benz, uh, doing production, building their doors on their SUVs. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so what? How how long you worked there? What what was uh what was uh your experience working working at Mercedes Benz? And hey, did they uh, did they give you a car? Uh, huh? Did they give you a car for working there? Nothing. <laughs> nothing but a hard time. <laughs> tell me, they ain't give you a car. They ain't, they ain't like, they ain't like give you, like, hey, you know, for doing such a good job, we want to give you this brand new S class. We building it. Uh, no, sir. Yeah, no, that ain't, they ain't giving you nothing. We building Maybachs and everything, and they ain't giving you nothing. What? How do you? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this because those is, you know, those are expensive cars. You know, people with expensive tastes, and those are the only ones that can afford the cars. But what about the people that actually built the cars? How do you guys feel about building cars for, for the 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 wealthy? How how did that make how how did that make you feel or what's or what's your opinion on that? I mean, where I'm from, Mercedes Benz is one of the main suppliers, you know, for jobs and things like that. So people really feel like if you work for Mercedes Benz, you done came up in the world. You know, you're doing big things. You're making more money than the average job in the area. Um, but with this whole coronavirus, COVID-19 thing, you know, it, it hurt a lot of people, uh, me being one of them. But I didn't let it keep me down. I just saw it as an opportunity to expand my horizons because I promise you, I'm not going back to work for nobody. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. So what, uh, what, how much, what was the average person making? At Mercedes Benz. <laughs> uh, ooh, that's hard. I mean, it all depends on how long you've been there. You top out. I say maybe seventeen, eighteen dollars. Can y'all believe? Can y'all believe? That's if you're not hired on. If you're not hired on yet. Can y'all believe that Lindell Burst? What's going on, Cleveland? Checking in. I got a. I thought I turned this damn thing down. Hold on, right quick. Hold on. Why? Why is you still? Oh, okay. This is turned down. I think it's, I think it's probably coming from there. But you know what? I can, I can edit all that shit out in post. Um. Lindell Burst from Cleveland checking in. What's going on, brother man? What's going on? Uh, Moke Hagma. Uh, Moke. Moke had. Okay. You know what? I'm just gonna call you Moke. He says, you didn't mess up. I have, he says, I have a note. 
Everybody wants me to get an Apple. I love my Note. I'm about to get the Note 20. No, bruh. No, bruh. No. If you got the Note, if you got the Note 10, stay with the Note 10, bruh. I'm just saying. The Note 20. No, man, don't don't go with Apple. Don't 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 listen to her. <laughs> don't listen to her. She she gonna get you. She gonna get you in trouble with that Apple, bro. I'm just saying. She gonna get you in trouble, man. <laughs> Teflon Don. I mean Teflon Twan, the trucker. I can't hear the other person you're interviewing. Oh, hold on, right quick. Okay, all right. How about how about that? How about how about that now? How, how about that? What what I'm looking like over there? Huh? What what I'm looking like over there, uh, that, Stacy? Better, all clear. All clear. See, told you. It's just a it's just a matter of uh. It's just a matter of uh. It's it's just a matter of working, tweaking. You know what I'm saying? It's just a matter. It's, mm -hmm. it's all. It's, it's, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. Just say we'll get it. We're back. We're back. Right. <sighs> hey. Tell them tune in. We're back. <laughs> Look, man, I'm 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 for real, for real. I I, I think I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to take this phone and uh, and take it back, man. Take it back. That's what I think so too. That's what I'm gonna have to do. And it ain't because nah, man. I ain't taking it back because of because it's Android. I mean, because it's Android. I'm taking it back because I want my. I might as well get my money back and just save it until they get this 5G bullshit right. You know, this 5G all shit right. Ain't, ain't right, man. All right, all right. Stacy Lynn. Mine ain't worth nothing either. Stacy Lynn, Stacy Lynn. All right, so you from Tuscaloosa. Is that Tuscaloosa, Florida? Florida? No. Alabama. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Alabama. Yes, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, down there. Working at the Mercedes. You know where they found that young lady? Um, I talked to Orzel, Orzel Johnson the other day. And um and where they where he found the young lady that was over on uh I fifty seven. Um she uh he was on the he was on he was on his way to deliver a load to the to the um to the shop, to the Mercedes Benz shop down there. So Mercedes Benz, how how long you been working there? Like how long you been working there? Uh, I have been with Mercedes over a year, almost two. Where where were you before before Mercedes? Well, shit. I was at a plant called a supplier called Borders. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a little branch off of Mercedes. They supply you know like other little stuff that goes into a Mercedes Benz. Okay, 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 okay. So Mercedes Benz for about two years, and the plant before that for how long? About three. <laughs> about three. So what was life like growing up in Alabama? Is it true what they say about the well, state? Well, is it true what they say about the state? And what is that? What do they say about the state? Uh, they say that Alabama ain't all that hot for you know for minorities. It ain't. <laughs> it ain't. <laughs> so you was you was born. You wait. You, you run that by me again. Now you was born, raised, and now you live. Where where were you born at? I was born in San Francisco. California? California. Yeah. Boy. The sunny state, California beaches. What the hell, man? Yeah. What brought what brought you down to Wait. 
from there, I went to Virginia. <laughs> okay, so and from you, Virginia to Alabama. <laughs> so you came from the sunny from from the sunny state to Virginia, where it's freaking cold. Down to down freaking. south, where stuff happens, pretty much. Right. What was life like growing up in uh growing up in uh California, and how long before y'all moved, and what was the reason? I'm going on and on, right? Um. Well, <laughs> I from what I remember, it was always sunny, uh, a lot of buildings, nice, nice shit. But I moved to Virginia when I was eight years old. We had kind of a, a family dispute, and so my mom, she wasn't doing too well, and that's how I ended up in Virginia. And then you know later on down the line, my my mom she started doing a lot better, got herself together, and uh, she was just tired of visiting and needed to change the scenery. And we ended up in Alabama. So, ended up in Alabama. She ended up going back to Virginia. And because I was grown and I had I my own house, I stayed behind. So, I've been in uh, Alabama for about going on eight years now by myself. Oh, uh, What about your moms? Now, where are your moms at? She, she went back to Virginia? Virginia. Yeah, she's in Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So, is it just, is well, you say by yourself theoretically but is it really you by yourself is it like some of your family members stay behind with you oh no nah. uh-uh uh <laughs> my stepdad he's from alabama so uh his side of the family i mean they they're there but i don't really i don't really you you know how that goes with my right. stepdad's family <laughs> right so right i interact I, you know i'm there but i'm not there so you say your stepdad, so your mom's moved back, but your dad, stepdad is, so that means your mom and, and stepdad separated? Oh, no, they together. No, they together. They both in Virginia. <laughs> oh, they both. Oh, okay, okay. So his family is down in Alabama. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, do you get along? Yeah. Do, you, do you get along with them or? Yeah, we get along. Yeah, we, you know, I'm just not the... You know, I'm not blood, so I'm not always in the mix, you know. I'd oh. be in the wind doing my own thing. Okay, okay. <laughs> but if okay. there's a family event, they'll call me and interact. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So they'll be like, yo, we got something going on. We want uh, we want Stacy Lynn to come down there. <laughs> yeah. We want Stacey. up that's what's up um all right so 45 days in like literally like what what made you decide to to jump in the truck well truck driving was always on my bucket list um mainly because it's a predominantly male profession and i always like the attention you know i just feel like hey who that is you know who is that she driving Cause you know, a lot of the times when I go to truck stops, people look at me as if, you know, let's just be honest. People look at me like, oh, that must be a lot lizard, or she must be riding with her man or something. When, but when I hop out the truck, no, it's just me, and there's nobody in it. You know, <laughs> it's just me. So I like to beat the odds. So what do you? So what do you say? What What do you say to them? Them people that look at you that way. What do What do you say to them? Um. Had instances where walking through the truck stop at night with my backpack going to get a shower or something, and I've had guys blow the horn or flash the lights. But ten times out of ten, I got my AirPods in, so I just see I, you know, I see it, but I just keep moving. I don't even acknowledge it. Um, I've been in the store and had people, you know, look me in my face, ask me, you know, like what's up, you know, and I kind of just laugh it off because at the end of the day, I do, I am in a relationship, so I know how to keep that fine line between. <laughs> trucking fun and doing my job so you know but I haven't ran upon nothing crazy yet I must say no alright so no Karen's in the now since you <laughs> since since you said that you walked through the parking lot and you got a lot of drivers that's you know that's cat calling you and all like that but how do you how do you stay protected in in situations like that how do I stay protected? Yes. Um, I, 
I got to be careful what I say. Let's just say I'm from Alabama, baby. I'm a always, I'm a always be all right. You get what, <laughs> you get what I mean? <laughs> I'm never lacking. Oh, okay, that's what's I'm up. I'm never lacking. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> so you you, you went you went to truck driving school or you went through uh you went through a company to get your license? I went to a school. Um, the school is called Truck Driving Institute in Oxford, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Shout out to them because they were lit. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a really it's a smaller program, but. I, I must say, they, they actually, they're diligent. They take the time with you as much as they can. And, you know, they don't pressure you into anything. You learn, you know, it's, it's all up to you. You know, it's what you make it and how you get through it. I had some hard days. I can't lie. I remember being on the range out there in tears, like, calling my boyfriend, like, look, I can't do it. You know, <laughs> but I worked my ass off to get there, and I worked my ass off to finish. So, and I actually finished at the top of my program. I was the only female in my program at that time. Okay, okay. So your your boyfriend, he's a driver too? He's not. How how did he how did he take it that uh that you told him to say, Hey, I wanna be a truck driver. <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh he kinda just gritted his teeth like, uh, you see, you know, like you think you wanna do that? <laughs> I was like, Yeah. You know, but he supports me, you know, to the fullest extent. So he knows that I'm going to keep myself protected at all times. And he's actually on the road with me right now. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, so how, now let me ask, now look, I, um, as far, <laughs> as far as a boyfriend, girlfriend goes, I, I, I don't see the, the, the lure of, of being on the truck together because y'all on the truck, y'all in that small space and you know, but as far as you being married, a married couple, that's, that's different. Y'all know how to, y'all know how to work out of your problems. Y'all know how to, you know what I'm saying? But as far as, as far as a boyfriend, girlfriend situation goes, how, how has, how has that worked out for you so far? crazy <laughs> I mean um, <laughs> to be honest I will say it is new <laughs> it is a it's a different transition I don't think necessarily you know boyfriend to girlfriend or husband to wife I feel like no matter who you are it's going to be different having somebody else in your personal space I mean one you're used to your truck you're used to your space you know how you like your things you know how you like your stuff they don't you know so when they first get in, you got to understand, okay, how are they going to be? How are they going to move? Are they going to lay down all the time? Are they going to sit up in the front with you? Are they going to sleep at the top? Are they going to sleep in the bed with you? You know, it was, it was different at first. Because my, my love of my life is clumsy. And so when he first got in, he was kicking shit over, knocking shit over, spilling shit, hogging covers. I was like, uh-uh, this ain't it. <laughs> you got to sleep in the top bunk. Uh-uh. That's how you kick but, him out. But, That's, I was about to say, how you gonna how you gonna kick this dude out? He ain't going nowhere. Like, yo, you gotta you gotta go in the other room, bro, and sleep. Nah, I'm going right up in this top bunk right here. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, but you know, I thought we were at each other's next the first couple of days just because it was a new environment, you know, new space and everything like that. But I will tell you one thing. He's very helpful when it comes to getting out and lifting landing gears and pulling stuff. And well, that's, hey, 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 bro. Hey, hey, bro. You better do something, man. Have he have, <laughs> have he thought of, have he thought about getting his uh his his license though? Have, have he thought about it? Yes, we have definitely talked about it because we're we've spoken about team driving and things like that. Yeah, and actually, um. He, he made a decision for me. You know, I asked him to do something that a lot of men usually would not do. Right. So, I mean, when I started, I already knew what I was getting myself into. And I asked him, could he just lay his jaw down, lay down everything? Could you just come with me and we do this, you know? So he, we, we gave up our apartment. He gave up everything just to let me do this. So that this is what I wanted to do. And I felt like things would move so much quicker if we just, 
Man, so that's, that's you know what, man. I man, yo, that's 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 what's up. That's that's bruh. That's love right there, man. That's love. Now that's not you know we we see how women give up everything for the men so that you know so that they can make you know their lives a lot better. But bruh, you you gave up everything for her, you know, because when you in this trucking life. You 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 in a totally different life, man. You don't your you, yo, yo, your clubbing days are over. You know what I'm saying? Your clubbing your clubbing days are over. Yo, you know you, you, it's all about going to the shippers and receivers and the and and taking the showers in the public and all like that, man. This is a lot of stuff that you literally got to get used to, and for you to give up everything for her. So that she could succeed, you know, I, I give you props for that, bro. Because, you know, a lot, a lot, yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes would not do it. I kid you not. They they would not do it. Now, females on the yeah, other and end. I, you know, it's, it's, I have some hard days out here sometimes. And, you know, sometimes you just need that person to confide. And it's, it's one thing to talk to somebody over the phone and confide in them, but... It's nothing like them being right there to tell you, baby, it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a better day, you know. So I, I appreciate him for a lot of what he does. That's he puts what's up, up with my attitudes, my good moves, my moody moves. <laughs> how long How um, long y'all How long y'all been together? Uh, how long y'all been uh, been dating? Um, about a year since change. Oh, okay, okay. Wise Al said that's true love right there. That is, bruh. That that is true love because a lot of niggas, a lot of dudes, see, I have to change it up. A lot of a lot of dudes <laughs> will not. The right word. <laughs> a lot of dudes will not do it. I kid you not. They they will not do it, especially especially if they see a female like get into this trucking industry and they be like and they, they and they sitting in a in the passenger seat. Nah, bro. You see a lot of you see a lot of males be in the driver's seat. And the females be in the passenger seat. So that's what's up. I, I like this. I like this gender change right here, man. That's that's what's up. How do you right. I, whenever, whenever the hundred thousand mark, I would definitely invest in whatever it is in his mind he wants to do. Anything he dreams of achieving, whatever trade business he wants to go into, I stand behind him a hundred percent. Like I will invest in whatever he decides to want to do. <laughs> That's what's up. That's he let what's me have my dream, so I'm gonna let him have his. That's what's up, man. That is what's up. How do you handle? How, how do you handle when veteran truckers uh, try to discourage you? Like try to discourage you out uh, of this field. Well, first of all, uh, I can't really. Answer, I don't know. I can't say because I haven't had too many runs with people like since I started this journey. I, I've got nothing but positive feedback. Uh, the only veteran truckers that I have <laughs> have had ugly looks and things like that from are the super truckers, the ones who get mad because my truck can't go faster than the government speed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it doesn't bother me because I don't have a CD, so I can't hear it. <laughs> now you know what I, I I hate to now being that you got your being that you got your guy with you. That's that's kind of cool. And everything because he'll watch out for you. He'll make sure that you are all right. But if you if you was solo, I would have I would have tell you to get a CB for real for real. I mean, don't turn that motherfucker on because it's it's a lot of rhetoric and stuff like that that be that be going on through the CB. But on on some real shit like you know if you in an area that you don't have no cell service or 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 whatever the case a cb will definitely come in handy for you and and for women not I as, with that a lot when i come to wyoming <laughs> as far as the guys uh, it, you know i don't care about you guys you know what i'm saying i i care about the women you know lockout men loves the women and i hate <laughs> and i hate to see women of color women of non-color you know the spanish mommies and all like that I hate to see y'all in precarious situations. Rest in peace to that young, uh, to that uh, fifty-two-year-old female driver uh, that was found by uh, that was found by another driver. Rest in peace to that. I mean, rest in peace to her. 
I heard um, they're uh, they ruling that as a homicide. They're thinking about doing that as a homicide. That's they, crazy. you know, I, you know, I, I, I talked to, uh, I talked to somebody today, and we was, and we was in a conversation. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but, um, yeah, me and other people don't feel that that's that's a homi- I mean, that's 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 a homicide. It's an accident. But it could be, it it. See, I can't even talk about it. I can't. I can't even talk. I can't even talk about it. I can't talk about it. Can't talk about it. Who really out here? But like his own. Like I just so many questions. Like first of all, she's on the side of a road. She said her her doors was locked. Like who went out there out their way to stop and just beat this old woman and then leave? Like I don't. I don't believe that. So like, like you said, let me ask you. Let me ask you, ask you this now. Now let me ask you this. Sure. And guys, LOM community, don't get don't get mad at me. All right, don't get mad at me. I'm just saying, what would it would have been different if she was a minority? Would the police said would would the police would have deduced that as a homicide if she was a minority? No. They they probably would have deduced that as a as an accident, right? How Orzel said they it. They wouldn't have, they would not have even put that much energy into it. Mm. You don't you don't think so? Nah. Mm. I know so. Mm. With everything that's going on in the in the world today. They don't want any more publicity than they have to have. I mean, that's just what it is. Well, you know, 2020, man. Mm. Uh, this year, this year has been a tumultuous year. And to be honest with you, I, I can't wait to this motherfucker hurry up and, and, and end, really. I mean, we got, what, September, October, November, December. We got four more months. You know what I'm saying? What? Yeah, four September, October, September, October, yep. November, December. They almost got me scared for my birthday. My birthday at the end of the year. Man, listen. I mean, there's so much shit that went on this year. It is fucking unbelievable. From the pandemic, from the killings, from the police on police on on minority killings, from black on black killings. Uh, the protesting, the 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 looting, the rioting. I mean, this 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 shit right here. This year is going into the history books, man. What about what what driver? What about the situation of the young man that was just going to his car, and uh, and yeah, he 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 got taken out. Uh, in a, he got taken out in the back by by uh, by one time. What what did is that you, the one? Is, is that the one where he was walking around the car and then he got in? Yes. Okay. What's, yeah, I saw that today on social media, and I was just like, I just couldn't understand. It. I couldn't fathom it. Every, like, and not one point was there a moment where you couldn't have handled that differently. I've seen a worse offenders do worse things and they have used other you know methods of takedown non-lethal tasers all kind of things and you shot that man more times than <laughs> more times than you can count to the point where he slumped over on his horn and his horn went off like that was grotesque it was uncalled for it was just it was what it was with his family standing there screaming like that, that's at no point should that have been okay What's what do you what what, what Stacy what what do you suggest uh what do, what do you suggest to be done like how how I I tell my son t- tell me if I'm wrong but I I my son's a black man he's a young black man I tell him all the time when he get pulled over by the police like look man just have your shit ready and don't give them no no reason to you know to fuck with you you know what i'm saying right 
Am I am I right or wrong for not telling them that? No, you're right. You're most definitely right. I mean, because nowadays you just don't, you never know what the next person's thinking. You know, definitely you have officers of the law who are genuine, you know, in, at their job. They're only doing what they have to do. But then you have those ones who feel like, oh, we got a point to prove or, you know, we have to show you who's in charge. And that's not how it should be. You know, you're supposed to protect and serve. I have friends who are afraid to call the police because they feel like they know it's not, they're not going to do their job. You know, so. They, they, might, get the, they might get the wrong, they might get the wrong one. You know what I'm saying? Because like the guy that got into the car, he, he was only breaking up a fight between two females and yeah, the situation, you know situation uh situation turned real real bad for for that guy so but it's it's accountability is is what is needed you know what i'm saying now i'm not going to go I, i'm not going to go too deep because you know like i said i'm i'm on both sides of the fence i am sorry guys but i am uh, because I do, yeah, yeah. I, I do have family that are cops, and I do have cop friends, and I I seen right. first I seen firsthand, uh, I seen firsthand doing a ride along with you know with one of my family members, I seen firsthand, you know the ills in other people, and they you know, but I also seen firsthand on, you know cops too. You know, so accountability, better training, you know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe uh, maybe they can handle situations better. But like I said, and I will stand behind this, cops are not wired right. They never, they never are. They never are, never is, never, never are. You know, <laughs> you know it's one of those things where, you know, like you're given a position of power. And it goes to your head, you know, kind of, you abuse it. I mean, that's just how it goes in life. I mean, that's, that's everywhere. That's at workplaces, such as grocery stores, corner stores, you know, anywhere that's a job. Everybody wants to be the boss. And when you're given that type of, you know, authority, some people just can't handle it. Because it, I can imagine being a police officer, the things you have resources to, the people, the places, you know, the information. So mm -hmm. I, I, I can see how it would be kind of hard not to abuse it. But at the same time, you you know, you, you, you made an oath. You made an oath to the community. And you would think that people would... You, you will uphold it. it, you know. You will uphold it, man. Uh, Stacy Lynn, give give a little bit of background of your trucking journey so far, man. You say you uh, you say you've been rocking out for forty five days. Like, how how has it been for <laughs> how has it been for the forty to five days? Oh gosh, start to finish. Um, well, when I first got with this company, I was put with a mentor. Um, he was sweet. I will say that he was sweet. Uh. But he wasn't a fit for me. <laughs> I say that. Um, oof, yeah. <laughs> Just, I mean, he had a he had a big big ass dog <laughs> on his truck, um, and he didn't have the he didn't have the best hygiene. I'll say that. But I was so miserable um, during the experience, you know, that I went off. Like I, I me and him ended up bumping heads the day before I was supposed to solo out. Ended up calling my company. My company was like, well, Stacy, if you want to go get out the truck with him, you're going to have to go ahead and solo right there where you at. And I was like, forget it. Fine. I'll go ahead. We'll do it. You know, and I ended up driving so well that I didn't even have to take a road. You know, because that's just, that's just what it was, you know. Um, So I sold out the fastest. I sold it out in exactly seven days. I was on the truck with that man for one week, and I sold it out, got my own truck. Uh, when I got my truck, I quickly realized there were a lot of things that he did not go over with me. Um, I had the basics. I had the fundamentals as far as driving the truck, getting to where I'm going, following routing. Um, I, my, my first load, I thought the day was going wonderful. You know, I was having more problems learning my clock. Well, that was the hardest part for me, understanding, you know, when my clock resets 
and not even just realizing how how quickly time goes by when you're driving a truck. So mm-hmm. first day, everything was going good. I was running low on time. I got to a shipper, and I jumped my fifth wheel. Um, that was not something that my mentor had taught me about. It was actually something that another coworker of mine had mentioned to me. But <laughs> I never, like when my coworker told me, I never even thought about it. You know what I'm saying? So that it would happen to me. So I get to the shipper. Long story short, it had been a long day, and I was tired. Time was running low. And I proceeded to back up under my trailer that I was picking up because it was a dropping hook. So I went to go pick up the, you know, my new trailer and slammed the whole reefer into the back of my cab. Um, mm. <laughs> and it was, it was not pleasant at all. I was out there huffing and puffing and sweating, trying to lift all this weight off of my, with my landing gear with the wood. To the point where another driver came by, dropped his load, came back by and saw me still standing there. He was like, you okay? I'm like, no. And so he's like, oh, you jumped your fifth wheel by about six inches. He's like, you're going to need a tow truck. He's like, you know what? Before we call a tow truck, let me see if I can help you. So he ended up doing a whole bunch of stuff. You know, he went into his truck, got a Gatorade bottle and this long fifth wheel puller. And he's like, do this, do that. Just the airbags, let them down. Uh, <laughs> press this button, press that button. He said, move forward a little bit, move back a little bit. And the last thing he said was, okay, I need to get for it real slow. I inch for it, and I, you know, it's clean. And I, I came a loose. And so uh, once he got me a loose, he taught me, you know, he told me how to back back under the, the trailer because basically the yard dogs had the trailer jacked up too high. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what, how that happened. Well, but that was the first le- experience. Let me, let, me, <laughs> let me interject on all of that because uh, that's – that sort of happened to me, you know, and it, and it happens. It happens to all of us. You know what I'm saying? If if you don't do nothing rookie, you know, if you don't do a rookie move, you're not learning. You're not learning. If you didn't jump that fifth, that fifth wheel, you wouldn't have learned how to get out of the situation. If you did jump the fifth wheel later down, I mean, later in your journey. You know, I jumped the fifth right. wheel. I, I jumped the I jumped the fifth wheel. I thought I, I straight up thought I had to I had to I had to find somebody with a forklift to lift it. I ain't know nothing about low gear. I had, I only knew about high gear because that's all that the that's all you know. I didn't learn none of that from the school. You know, I ain't know nothing about the the, the, the different gears. Um, you know. I did the school ain't te- the school ain't teach me that. Um Right. You know, and you had old ass truck. And the and and the uh and the um and the uh the 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 mentor or the the trainer didn't teach me nothing about that. But when I went in the yard and jumped the fifth wheel, I was like, Man, I gotta call the um I, I gotta call the I, I gotta call the a tow truck guy, they're going to get mad at me, yada, yada, yada. But somebody came out there, they was like, oh, you you just jumped the fifth wheel. That's nothing. Uh, you just had to put it in low gear. And I'm like, how, how, how do you put it in low gear? Oh, well, you just do this and do that. And I was like, okay. But, man, low gearing motherfucking 40-something some odd pounds. Whoo! Oh, yeah, I know all about it. Woo! sweat. Man, listen. Uh, if 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 I didn't get no workout that day, I got a workout that day. I'm serious. So so yeah, these you know if you hadn't did it, then it's all about learning. It's all about learning, Stacy. For real, it's all about learning out here, man. You know, just make sure that this this make sure what you what you what you do wrong, you learn from it. You know what I'm saying? What's the uh, what's what's the uh so what's so what's uh I, I wanted I wanted to back up to your trainer, man. Dude had a dog. How <laughs> how do company? You know, I, I don't understand. I I, I had a I, I got a I got a trucker buddy. You know, she told me of her experience. Uh, she called me uh, back in the day got on with this truck it was a female female I'm, I'm gonna call her female butch because she you know she wasn't a dyke or anything like that but she was like cock diesel in the way she is like 
like one of them stern motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> she had she had a dog on uh she had a dog, okay. And I asked her, I was like, how how do that work? Like you you sleeping up top, she's sleeping on the bottom, and dogs give off that dog odor. How did that work? And that's what I was saying. How did that work? That's, that's how what... how do a company how do a company let a trainer with a dog train I mean uh, let somebody train with a with a dog on there? You don't know how that dog gonna gonna react to a stranger? How did that work for you? Um, they ask you, you know, are are you allergic to pets or anything like that? Um, well, you don't never anticipate like when when they say they have a dog or something, you don't think this big ass like hundred pound dog is gonna pull up or jump out the truck. You're thinking like maybe a little, you know, a little house dog or something. Um, a chihuahua. That, I mean, me personally. Right, me personally, if I'm gonna have a animal in my truck, I'm gonna make sure that that animal's space is clean. Like the environment around it stays clean and sanitized. Because nobody wants to get out of a truck at a truck stop smelling like dogs. Right. Or you know, or having dog hair all over their shit. Like nobody wants to be like that. And me personally, I'm a, like a really girly girl, so I was like cringing. And so <laughs> uh, this dog is every bit of a hundred and some plus pounds. Every time I'm in the truck and I have food or something and I, I get out, she eats it. And, and then, you know, him as uh, the owner, you would think he'd be like, oh, I, I apologize. You know, let me reimburse you for that. No, he didn't. Um, he was the type of person that didn't bathe, but every three or four days, I couldn't handle that. Uh, it was just, he would, he would blow his truck out and dog hair would fly everywhere and I'd be up top. It was just, you, you could just tell he he was tired of me being in his space, and I felt the same way. Um, it got to a point where he was basically asking me as the last two days of me being on the truck with him, you ready to solo out? You ready? You ready? You ready? To the point where he was pushing me off of his truck. And, you know, I, like I said, I'm from the country, baby. I'm not going for that at all. So <laughs> so we had our words, whatever, like that. And that's how I ended up uh, soloing out when I did. But it was it was different, you know. When you're sleeping in the top bunk, you know, you have to use a ladder. And mm -hmm. he wasn't the type of guy. He slept with the dog. The dog slept in the bed with him. What? He wasn't the type of guy. Wait, 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 yeah. wait. What? Yeah, the, that big-ass dog slept in the bed with him. And uh. he, wasn't the type, he wasn't the type of person that got up in the middle of the night, you know, like he didn't break his sleep. So uh. I, would, I would think that, you know, me personally, me personally, being a female, I get up throughout the night. I might have to go use the bathroom. Right. He would put his ladder up. He would put his ladder up so that I couldn't get down. You know, and that I didn't like because now you're irritated because I have to wake you up to use the bathroom. And it was just, it just, it, it, it wasn't my environment at all. Uh, like it was a rough week, but I'm glad I got through it. Uh, Doll slept in the bed with him. Please tell me you took a shower in the morning, like. Y'all, y'all went to go take a shower. Mm -hmm. He, uh, I would. It got to the point where I was paying for my own showers because I didn't want to be seen like associated. Because you know that shit look bad. You know if I if I want to go get a shower, because my first day on the road, I had to ask him like, "Hey, can we get a shower?" And um, when he came to pick me up from my terminal, first thing he said was he hadn't had a shower in about four days. What, what the hell, like? And he got a dog on there. It, and he has a dog. Uh, so I was like, well, can we get a shower? And he, yeah. So he told we you that? Like, line. he, I mean, he, I mean, was he, was he a black guy or a white guy? I, I just asked him, I said, yeah. I asked him, I said, can, can we go get a shower? And he's like, yeah, it is about time for me to get a bath. He's like, I ain't had one in about four, four days. And I was you just like, don't oh, want to, you, you yeah. could have, too, TMI, too much information. He, you could have. You could have saved that information, bruh. Yeah, you, you could have saved that. And you got a dog on the truck, too? Mm-mm. Right. Mm -mm. So like I said, no. when, when I asked him to go get the shower and we got inside to the pilot on a flying day or whatever, 
Um, and we went, we went to the counter and people were looking at us like crazy, like, are they together? You know, it just made me look bad. And so after that first shower, um, he went and asked if we get team showered. After that, I just paid for my own showers after that. I wasn't, I wasn't going for it. Big guy, little guy, (laughs) uh, Really scrawny guy, really scrawny, like Caucasian guy. Really, like your what you would see as your typical. I ain't gonna say it. It's not nice. He just looked like what you think he looked like. <laughs> okay, okay. Sleeping in the bed with the dog and not, yeah, no, no hygiene, brother. The dog in the driver's seat, passenger seat, bed, mm-hmm. hair be everywhere. Then the dog is so big. That she can't jump out or jump into the truck. He has to pick this big dog up. Like it was just a hot mess, honey. Oh, you couldn't. Oh, he had. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, well, I, I'm glad you. I'm glad you were able to make it out of that, man. That's 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 crazy right there. That is so so crazy. Uh, you you wanted the the company that you that you're rocking out with. They. They still they they treating you good. I mean, I know that you were a rookie and everything, um, and they was able to bring you know they was they was able to let you bring your boyfriend uh, with you on a you know on the truck and everything. But uh, is this a company? Is this a starter company or is this a company you think you're gonna you're gonna be out? I mean, rock out with for a while because you know in order to in order to move on, you know you gotta you know the one and done is is not per particularly the it anymore you gotta at least do at least two so that you know you can get a you know better better job in the future um i would definitely say right now it's a good starter company um they're definitely good to me i will say that dispatch sucks like as far as getting in contact with people when you need them if it's not during business hours, it ain't happening. If that that needs some work, I will say. But as far as staying with this company, I'll probably stay with this company, you know, a little over a year just because it's my first job, the first time driving a truck, and most companies want at least a year of over the road experience before they even think about considering you. And me personally, I just couldn't stay here anyway because I can't. The company is coast to coast. We deliver in 48 out of 50 states. And I just can't see myself driving across the, the world, the country, got you know, doing 61 miles per hour. I just can't. Oh, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> what's up. All right, Stacy Lynn, if you if you had it all, if you if you had the chance to do it all over again, uh, would you would have got into the truck? And if so, what would have been your plan B if 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 you just if you couldn't get in the truck? Ooh, that's hard one. Um, trucking, yes, I still would have gotten to it because I just, like I said, like I really, that's something I wanted to do. Like I've always wanted to drive a big rig. So I definitely would have still tried to do that. If I could not have, um, I definitely would have gotten into some type of like makeup, uh, makeup industry because I'm pretty good at that. (laughs) But other than that, I really can't say. Okay. My main challenge is make up and drive the truck. <laughs> make up and driving the truck. That's what's up, man. Uh, let me ask you. Let me let me let me ask your uh, boyfriend right quick. Uh, ask him. Um, what? Oh, you, but you probably knew. But what was he doing before he, you know, put everything down for you? What What was he doing before all of that? Um, I was working at the U.S. Steel um, Mill. Okay. Okay. How long you been? How long you been working there? Um, about nine months before the corona. Um, after you know, yeah, pretty much. Sat down to collect the unemployment like everybody else. Pretty much, cause they work you forever. I had to drive like an hour or so. You know what I'm saying? To get to the job, work 12 hours, then drive like an hour or so back. Damn it, man. I was just chilling for a moment. Damn it, man. Like I said, this corona shit just, just, just fucked up everybody, man. 
So how do you how, how do you feel how do you feel being out there with your girlfriend, bro? <laughs> I mean, we cool. It's cool. It's you know, she be it's different. You know, she be getting you know worked up, like overly worked up about stuff sometimes. Oh, okay. you know, she take it out on everybody sometimes. Okay, that's what's I up. Apologize, bro. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Thanks for letting me holler at you. Stacy Lynn, everybody. <laughs> Stacy <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> uh, you got any kids? You, you you don't have no kids, do you? No. You don't no, have... I have a uh, I have a step baby from a prior relationship, but other than that, no, I don't. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, Stacy Lynn. What, what, uh, you're like, like fresh, like, like I walked up in the store and opened up a pack of, opened up a pack of Stacy Lynn in the truck. That's how fresh this young lady is, man. I don't know where that, I, I don't know where that came from, but anyway, anyway, you have any, uh, <laughs> you have any tips or, or advice for females? Uh, new females that's coming out in this game. You have any advice for them? Never let anybody, especially not a man, tell you what you can't do. Because, like I said, I graduated at the top of my class. I tested out for the state at the top of all of my class. We got out of the guys and everything. So just keep your head on straight. It's easy to be persuaded out here on this road, especially by men. So just stay focused. Keep your head on. Keep your keep your mind on the bag, and you'll be all right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Stacy Lynn, thank you for coming on the Lockout Men Podcast Show. I had a good Any, time. Anytime. I had anytime. a good time. We thank we had we even with all the technical difficulties, we we had a good time. Not not that many people in the LOM community right now, but that's that's all well and fine because this is this is just the behind the scenes. That's what's up. If you want to come on and chop it up with me on the Lockout Men podcast show, you definitely can. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up in the All Gmail. Right. That's Lockout Men podcast at gmail.com. If you want to see me over at I Instagram, if you want to see me over at Instagram, Hit me over at the Instagram. That's uh, hit me in the DM. Yo, I appreciate all you guys watching. I appreciate you guys listening. And while somebody playing me out, I just want to say, if you like this kind kind of content, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell on the way out the door. And make sure you hit that all button so you can get all of this good content when I come out. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do. If so you want to, sure y'all follow me. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, uh, let me, let me bring it back. Hold on, hold on. We, we about to bring it back. Hold on. Stacy Lynn, what's, what's your? Go ahead and shout out your, uh, your uh, social media right quick. Well, on Snapchat, it's Miss Pick 'Em Down, M Z T H I C K M D W N. Follow me on Snapchat. I'm on there the most. Facebook, Stacey Lynn Richardson, Instagram, Stacey Lynn, add me. I'll definitely be out, be up there for anybody to hit me up, comments, let me know what you think, what you like on YouTube, Stacey Lynn Richardson. All right, that's what's up, that's what's up, Stacey Lynn, all over the place. All over the place for Stacey Lynn, man. So, guys, make sure you uh, check her out on YouTube, Snapchat. Instagram, Facebook, she's all she's all there. Up under the same name, Stacy Lynn. All right. So with that said, I pre again, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys listening. And on that note, we will get up out of here and I will come back at you guys with another video. And oh, wait, I know, I know I didn't say it, but I'm gonna say it now. If you guys want to support your boy and support the channel, don't forget to get me something to drink. Hit me up in the Cash App. That's lock cash, I mean dollar sign, lockout men. Or in the coffee. Hook me up with something to drink, y'all. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I get back with you guys <laughs> later. Y'all take it easy. Peace. Peace. Stacy Lynn. <laughs>